Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Abundant Life Worship Center Worship Experience. Where in all our getting, we get an understanding. Amen. 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 Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Hallelujah. God is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 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 And everything within me. Everything within me. And all that is within me. And all that is within me. 
today. Oh, glory be to your name. He's a wonder worker. And he has the power. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. God, we thank you for being a wonder worker. Being a miracle worker. Oh, you're working on us today. Hallelujah. God in heaven. Lord, we thank you today for being that wonder worker. That miracle worker, Lord, that's constantly working for us behind the scenes. But, Lord, we come today, Lord, Father God, Lord, I thank you on today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy on today. Lord, we thank you for your outstretched hands. But Lord, on Calvary's cross, you died for us. And we may have a right to the tree of life. Lord, and today, Father God, we come to worship you. Lord, we come to worship you today, Lord, in spirit and in truth, Lord. Lord, we come to lift you up, for there's none like you in all the earth. Lord, we come to cast out our cares upon you, for you care for us. Lord, we come today, Lord, to bow down before you, Lord. Lord, have your way today. Lord, you see, Father God, every need that we have today. Meet every need, God. Lord, pour out your blessings upon us today, Lord. Lord, we need your spirit. Lord, to lead us and guide us, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to wash us today. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to order our steps, to direct our path, Lord. Lord, Father God, your word said those who trust and believe in you, Lord. Signs and wonders shall follow them, Lord. Lord, we need you, Father God, to show us your signs. Show us your wonders on today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for those on the sound of my voice today, Lord. The Lord, Father God, that you would keep your eyes on them, Lord. They're going out and they're coming in, Lord. Cover them and protect them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, Father God, we come to lay, Lord, Father God, to cast all of our cares, Lord, Father God, before you, Lord. Those who may be sick among us, Lord, Father God, heal, deliver, and set free. For you know you to be a healer. Lord, we know you to be a way maker, Lord. 
Make a way, Father God, for those, Father God, who need a, need a way made today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to order our steps. But we need you, God. Lord, we need you every hour. Lord, we need you right now. Lord, Father God, to create us a clean heart and a righteous spirit, Lord. Lord, give us the mind of Christ on today. If we may do the thing that you have called us to do, and be the people that you have called us to be, Lord. Lord, we need you today. We need you today, Lord. Lord, to be all that you called us to be. Lord, you called us to, Father God, to be a light unto the world, Lord. Lord, you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You told us to be the salt of the earth, Lord. Help us today. Oh, glory be to your name, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to send a word today, Lord, that we can beat every heart, mind, soul, and spirit. A Lord, that, a word that was pulled down every stronghold, loose every shackle, destroy every yoke, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we're here today, Father God, for none other than to give you praise. Our eyes are stayed on you today. Oh, glory be to your name today. Lord, have your way. Let us not lead the same way we came, Lord. But, Lord, fill our cup today, Lord, that our cup running forward, God. Help us today, Lord, to stand against the wiles of the devil, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Father God, right now, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord, to empty ourselves that you may fill us again. But it's not about us, but it's all about you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, hear our crowd today. Hear our crowd today, Lord. But we need you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we pray, Father God, for those, Father God, that hear us today, Lord. Whatever they need is today, Father God, I ask you to meet it right now. In the name of Jesus. And we forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. But he is a miracle worker. A wonder worker. Working a wonder. Hallelujah. And we can just look around and see the thing that God has done. We should be encouraged. But I believe we all understand if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God this time. I want to welcome our guests to Abundant Life Worship Center. This is your first time, praise God. I want to welcome you to the house of hope, healing, and love, to everyone that we touch. And those of you who are tuning in by social media, praise God, we, we hope that your time together today will be one of reviving that will help you to understand that God loves you right where you are. I hope that we will have a word, a song that was sung today that would encourage you to run on as the old folks used to say and see what the end is going to be. And not to give up on God because he won't give up on us. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you once again for tuning in to the Life Center today. Amen. We want to praise God together. But I believe when we all come together, as the old folks used to say, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So we want to praise God today that he continually to bless us and meet our needs. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God at this time. Praise God. We're going to move a little further in our service. It's offering time. Amen. But we all have an opportunity to do what thus says the Lord. He told us to give 10% for our tithes back unto him. He told us to give a free will offering. And when we do these things, God said, he'll rebuke the devour for our sakes. He said, he'll give back unto us good measures, pressed down, shaking together, shall men give into our bosom. For our God can give us way more than we can give him, amen? Hallelujah. So God said he loves a cheerful giver. And when we give, we are a blessing to others. And you know, when you had a need, praise God, God met that need because somebody was obedient. So we're going to ask you today to be obedient to God. Give that he may be able to use your, your what you give to bless others. 
And this blessing continues over and over. It never runs out. Because the more you give, he'll give back into us. Amen? So whatever the Lord lays on your heart today to give, praise God, be a blessing. Be a blessing. On the screen today, you'll see four ways to give. We can text to give. We can give online. We can give by cash out. You can mail your offering in to 2070 Brown Road, Helps of Georgia, 30815. If you're here in person, praise God. <clears throat> you can pull out your tithing envelope and drop it in the receptacle on your way out the door. And all these ways you can be a blessing and keep the, the business of the church continues to go and flow and meet the needs of those who are in need. Amen. But that's how outreach ministry is done. That's how the local ministry is con continued to be done because we need resources. Hallelujah. Each one reach one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for every seed that will be sown on today. We thank you for every sower, God. But you say, Lord, Father God, that it won't leave their hands, Father God, as it leaves their head, but not their life, Lord. That you will rebuke the devour for their sakes, Lord. Lord, we declare and we decree today, Lord, Father God, there should be nothing missing, lacking, or broken in our lives, God. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, Father God, for those who have a willing heart, Father God, and a willing mind to give, that you will continue to bless, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise in this building. Come on, give God some praise in this building. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and what every tongue that rises against me thou shalt condemn. Everybody say that. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises thou shalt condemn me. Right, we're gonna give God the praise because we're Come never on, defeated. Yeah, we are on. never defeated. Yeah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Yeah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. We shall never, Lord. And because of the greatest power. We shall never, never be defeated. And because He's the greatest power, we'll never be defeated. We shall never, never be defeated. And because, and because God He's the greatest power. I shall rise, I shall be, I shall go in victory, no weapon formed against me will ever overtake. I shall rise. 
I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. I shall go. I shall go. In victory. In victory. No weapon form. No weapon form. Against me. Against me. Will never. Will never. Overtake me.
Yes, Lord, never be defeated. Yes, Lord, because he is our champion. Never be defeated. He is our champion. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Never be defeated. God is our champion. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. The gates of hell shall not be and shall not prevail. Now with the glory. Yes, Lord. Now with the glory. Hallelujah. And he asked us to give it to him. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You see, we've got to bring our own fire. Yes. As we bring our fire and our fragrance, our alabaster box, and give it to the Lord, then he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we dare ask or think. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and give him a glorious praise in this house. Come on, give him a glorious praise in this house. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Sheke de rabbi. Rumbo de ke sheke. Yea, Lord. Thank you, sir. Le grando resi catalabo sheke. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yea, Lord. Le grando sheke. Yes, Lord. Thank you for that. Yea, shako rosekete. La grando resi catal. Brother, Brother Wayne, I hear the Lord say that healing is nigh thee even in your mouth, that every procedure is a process. But healing is nigh thee, even in your mouth, that as you speak to that condition, healing takes place, and it is nigh thee in your mouth. Yea, for surely as I have borne thee, I will heal thee. I will satisfy thee with long life and pleasant things, saith the Lord. Yea, Lord, fret not because of lack, for surely I will satisfy thee, saith the Lord. In the name, glory to God. Yes, Lord, thank you, sir. 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 Hey, manda rose. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, sir. La grondo resi catarabando re. La grando resi na rose ke. Praise you, sir. Glory. Thank you, Lord. La grando shimando crush pekete. Yes, Lord. My God, my God. Yes, Lord. Ma do rose kete. Manda rose kete le la ba do she. Mando raba lo bo se ke. Manda robo se kete le le bando re si. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I came this morning to tell you that God uses broken things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We spend so much time looking for the perfect thing, but God uses broken things. Mm. Yes, Lord. He not only uses broken things, but he uses broken people. We tend to take broken dishes and other things and we throw them away. But I've come to tell somebody this morning that even in your brokenness, God have need of you. And he desires to use you. In fact, in fact, the truth of the word is Mary took an alabaster box and broke it and poured out a year's wages. And it was in that brokenness that the Lord was glorified. Yes, I'll say that too. He took a two-piece fish snack and he broke the bread and fed 5,000, not including women and children. Look at somebody and tell them he'll use broken things. Not only will he do that, but in Jeremiah he says, break up the fallow ground that he might do a new thing. Glory to God. It is in brokenness that we tend to want to throw things away, throw people away. But yet, God uses broken things. All throughout Scripture, we see him using broken things. Glory be to God. In fact, Moses was a broken man. I'm ahead of myself. He killed a man. And then ran to the backside of the desert, and the Lord used them to lead his people out of Egypt. I came to tell somebody this morning, God uses broken things. He not only uses broken things, but he uses broken people. Glory to God. Can I work with this for just a few minutes? <sighs> Anybody experienced any brokenness in your life? And yet, God will use broken things. Turn with me briefly in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 32. In Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 through Five, and then verses 22 through 25, and then I might look at Psalms 51 and 17, and Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 through 5. The Word of God says, Jacob also went on his way, 
And the angel of God met him. Now, I'll give you history and context. <clears throat> this is Jacob preparing to go meet his brother Esau. You remember who Esau is. He was the eldest brother. Esau was the one who had promised them, I'm coming to kill you. His eldest brother, whom he had taken his birthright from. And he says, when Jacob saw them, he said, this is the camp of God. So he named that place Mahanam. Next three verses. Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. The Edomites, they are uh, descendants of Esau. He instructed them, this is what you are to say to my Lord Esau. Your servant Jacob says, I have been staying with Laban and have remained there till now. I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goats, male and female servants. Now I am sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor in your eyes. He says, I want to find favor in your eyes. Now let me share something with you again as we go to verse 22 and verses 22 through 25. Here's the setup here. Jacob is, he's operating at a place of fear. Everybody say fear. He's operating at a place of fear, and that fear comes for, uh, because of his life, uh, what has happened, what has transpired in his life, and not only because of what has transpired in his life, but because of who he is. And here in this 22nd verse, chapter 32 and verse 22, he says, that night Jacob got up. And he took his two wives, Rachel and Leah, you remember them, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. This is the river Jabbok. And after he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. A man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Look at somebody and tell them God will use broken things. The man saw that he could not overpower him, so he touched the socket of Jacob's hip. We all have heard uh, sermon after sermon of how uh, Jacob finds himself wrestling with this man. And at night, uh, then when he could not be overpowered uh, by the man, he says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Interestingly enough, in the successive verses down through verse 28, you don't have to go there, but I'll tell you what it says. He says where the man wrestled, who wrestles with him, he asked him, what is thy name? You know, people will like to call you a lot of things. It's what you answer to. For all his life, Jacob has been answering to, and he tells the man, the angel of the Lord, he tells him, he says, he says, I am Jacob, supplanter, deceiver, cheater. He begins to identify himself through his experiences. He begins to declare that this is who I am on the basis of what I've done. On the basis of how I've behaved and I know that this is how other people see me. This is not only how other people see me, but the limp that I'm now walking with is evidence of where I've been. Can I talk in here today? And yet, we find ourselves no different than Jacob. We spend so much of our time trying to outrun who we are. Trying to outrun who people say we are. But there comes a time in your life 
where you decide, I don't need to run from who I am. I just need to be who God says I am and who God knows I am. That's a decision. That's a decision. Every one of us has to make a decision that I am who God says I am. It didn't change anything about what Jacob had been through, what he had done, but God needed to remind him that you're a prince. And so here it is, the man that he'd wrestle with, he says, no, you're not that. You're not that any longer. You are Israel, prince of God. I came this morning to tell the church that God uses broken things. It's amazing how we spend so much time praying, wanting God to use us, wanting God to bless us, wanting God to favor us. Here's the reality of it. Jacob was walking in all of that already. Can I tell you today that you're already walking in the blessing? The question is, will you allow it to be manifested in your life? So often we're praying for what we already possess. I'm going to help myself today. Praying for what we already possess and saying, God, give me more of what I already have. And God says, you've got it now. What are you going to do with it? God will use broken things. When we find ourselves at a place of brokenness, it is at this season and at this stage of our life that God takes us through this circular journey and reminds us, this is who I said you were a long time ago. You're really not stepping into anything new. This is what I said before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you and I declared you a prophet unto the nations. We spend so much time trying to become what we already are. The giftings of God that are on the inside of you and I, they're already there. The question is, will you allow them to be appropriated and used by God? Somebody shout, I'm gifted. Somebody say, I'm anointed of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But in our brokenness, it's so easy to forget this. In our brokenness, it's not only easy to forget it, but it's easy to not understand that he still cares. He still loves me. His hand is still on my life because God chose you. That's good news today. Here it is, Jacob the man of God, with many possessions. And in his, in his nature, he sends his servants, he sends his possessions in advance because he's trying to buy himself time with what is inevitable, with what he has perceived, with what he has believed, with what he has remembered, that my brother remembers what I did, my brother remembers what we've been through, he's coming to kill me. How many of you know God changes things? And here it is. Jacob finds himself by himself. But he's really not by himself. Anybody ever felt like you're by yourself? Jacob, he felt like he was by himself. And yet, after sending everybody along, he wasn't by himself. Yes, Lord. He uses broken things. He, he takes a little boy's lunch and he broke it and fed thousands. Mary, she finds herself taking the alabaster box of ointment and she breaks it and she shows, she pours out her love upon her Lord, Jesus the Christ. Look at today and say it's time to pour. Oh, my God, help us today. You and I will never have the crop 
that we ought to have until we plow and until the old clods are broken, until we break up some stuff, we'll never have the fruitfulness that God has purposed in our lives. Jesus, even at the Last Supper, he took the bread and said, this is my body which is broken for you. People, they throw away broken things, but God, he uses broken things for his glory. God uses broken things. He uses bruised and wounded people, and he tells us that we're all damaged goods. Oh, God, help us today, that we're all damaged goods. Satan, he would never use our broken and our bruised places, but he will use them to shame us. He will use them to distract us. He will use our broken and our bruised places not only to shame us, but he wants us to think that God not only can't love us, but God does not care about us. I've come to tell somebody this morning that God will love us no matter how far we are from him. He will love us and demonstrate his love to us. Amen. I want you to write this down. I can't be too broken, too horrible, and too damaged for God to use me. Oh, my God, help us. There are so many examples of broken people in the Bible. Scripture is loaded with stories of how God uses broken things and broken people. Abraham, before we ever knew what a lie was, he lied about his wife to protect himself. And God used them to bless all the families of the earth. Moses, a murderer who beat people to death, was God's man to lead Israel out of Egypt. Gideon, he was a coward in the store. He was threshing wheat in secret in the wine press. God used him to rescue his people from the Midianites. Come here, Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute, and yet God used her to protect Israel's spies in Jericho. God uses broken things. If there was ever a word of encouragement I've come to give you, it's this. God will use broken things. You and I can never be so broken that God cannot redeem us. Yes, Lord, I'll say that again. You and I can never be so broken that God cannot use us. God, he brings us life to us as a gift. It's okay to declare and say that I am a broken thing, a broken person, because God is here to heal and use broken things. Broken things, broken bread, broken lives, broken hearts, broken hopes, broken dreams, broken visions. God is glorified in broken things because it gives him an opportunity to get involved and to work on your behalf, to work on my behalf, to work on our behalf when there are broken things. I want you to write this down. God wants to work in my life. God will use the brokenness to work in your life. He not only will use that, but he will heal the broken parts. Jacob, the supplanter, he comes up with this elaborate scheme of how he's going to get in his brother's good graces. You don't need a scheme. Just let God do what he's going to do. How he's going to do it, when he's going to do it. I'm going to say that again. There is no elaborate scheme necessary. The reality of it is God had already been working on Esau's heart. Jacob didn't need to send everybody in advance. He didn't need to send the people that couldn't defend themselves. He didn't need to send the cattle, the goats, the oxen, the donkeys. He didn't need to send his wives. He didn't need to do any of that. But in his mind, this was his perfect plan. The Bible tells us and reminds us that many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purposes of God that shall be established. You see, when God created this earth, when God chose how he would redeem fallen man, he always had Abram in mind. He always had Israel in mind. Amen. He always had Isaac in mind. And yet we see 
in the world we live in, the great religions, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, who we call Israel. God always had them on his mind. Can I tell you something today? God has always had you on his mind. You've never been so far from him and so broken that God could not use you. And God, he comes to not only change our name, but to change our perspective. He comes to change our perspective about not only how we see ourselves, but what we know about ourselves. Jacob, here it was. We, we see his life story. He deceived his blind father. He stole the blessing. His whole life was one of deception. And yet, he finds himself here in Haran, in Mesopotamia. He followed the same pattern. He even did it with his uncle Laban. Laban was a trickster himself now. Don't, don't forget that. Uh, his uncle Laban was a trickster as well. And he makes him work for a long time for the woman that he really wanted. But yet, he was persistent in his pursuit of the things that he knew that God had put on his life. You and I have to be persistent in our pursuit of the thing that God has spoken to us. Jacob, he comes to meet his brother Esau. Esau has got 400 armed mighty men. He's operating at a place of fear. Everybody say fear. You cannot allow fear to be your compass. So many times in life, we allow fear to be at the heart of everything that we think, that we say, and that we do because we're motivated by fear instead of faith. Anytime we let fear rule instead of faith leading and guiding us, it disconnects us from the Holy Spirit. It disconnects us from the Holy Spirit because we allow fear to be magnified instead of our faith to allow us to overcome whatever is in front of us. God is asking us, he's telling us, he's directing us that we have to live in faith and not fear. In fact, the word of God says we walk by and not by. It's easy to see the 400 horsemen in front of me, but I've got to remind myself, wait a minute, the Lord, he's directing, he's guiding, he's leading, and I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight because there will be things that you see that will mess you up. There will be things that you see that just mess you up. Not only mess you up, but it brings you to a place of where you become faint of heart. I want to tell you today that you and I, we cannot be faint of heart. But rather we have to trust God in every situation and in every circumstance. Here in the 28th verse of that 32nd chapter, the angel, he replied to Jacob. He says, no longer will you be known as Jacob, but your new name bestowed from God in heaven is Israel, a prince of God. How many of you know God, he changes names? But he doesn't just change names, but he changes perspective. He changes not only how Jacob sees himself, but how the world will see Jacob. And here it is. We see as we step into this place, God uses broken things. Jacob, he had wrestled with the man, the angel, all night. And here he rises up in the morning as a cripple. Life has a way of coming at us that sometimes it makes us feel like we've been crippled. Life has a way of coming at us so strong and so, so direct that it attempts to paralyze us and immobilize us when the reality of it is God is still on our side. I've come to tell someone this morning, God is still on your side. He not only is on your side, he's on our side. He is for us and not against us. Esau, Jacob, they come to meet one another. Jacob, he runs to meet his brother. He can't move as fast as he would have and as he could have in days gone by because he's hurt, he's broken, he's crippled. And in that 33rd chapter, when Esau saw him, 
He ran and he met him. He kissed him. And they wept together. Broken people. Broken lives. Broken things. Mary, she's 15. But she's already pregnant. Johnny, he's 16. He's already a father. Tom, he's 26, and he's already suffering from a serious heroin addiction. Amy, she's 24 and a single mother, working the corner to pay the rent. And Aaron, he's 35. He's having that affair. Julie, she's 31 and having a third abortion. But these are all people that God loves and forgives because God uses broken things. In the 11th chapter, in the second chapter of Mark, verse 11, here's what Jesus said. Here's what Jesus said. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I'm not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. All too often, we look through the lens of life, and we think that the people that God uses and chooses are the perfect ones, the ones that have their life all together. I want you to be careful with that and not mistake your moment because you're looking for the perfect when God's looking for you. God uses broken things, Elder Williams. He not only uses broken things, but he repairs them. He repairs them. I've come to find out that even people who love God make stupid mistakes. I'll say that again. Even people who love God make stupid mistakes. People will always have their shortcomings no matter who they are. And God loves to be involved with broken people. The assignment of the church in this season is to lead people to Jesus. But if we throw away broken things, we'll throw away broken people. And the church will miss this moment. We can talk about prosperity. We can talk about faith. We can talk about all of these things. But if we don't talk about the fact that God, he uses broken things and he sends broken people to the church to be healed, to be delivered, to be set free. If we lose sight of that, can the church be the church? God uses broken things. God uses broken people. And I close with this, that there will always be broken things. There will always be broken people, but just like Jacob, maybe you're wrestling with God right now. Don't be afraid to be involved with God because you think that you're not good enough. I came to tell you that you are. Not only can you be involved with God, but God can be involved with you. You're not so broken. I'm not so broken. We're not so broken that God can't use you. He wants to use you and I. That's what the church is for, for God to use broken things, broken people, broken situations and circumstances that he himself can transform and turn around. Will you allow God to turn some things around? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet this morning, if you can. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning for your presence, for your person. We bless you today, Lord Jesus, for all that you are, who you are, what you've done, 
and what you are doing that we await to see. Just like for Jacob, you use broken things, broken people, broken hearts, broken lives. Lord God, do it in us. Remind us that you're for us and not against us. You are a healer. Father God, we release our faith for healing, for wholeness, for hope where there's hopelessness. I thank you for that today. And Lord God, as you remove the scales of doubt and unbelief from our eyes, the bitterness from our hearts, do a new thing. That the church be the church. That as you send them from the north, the south, the east, and the west, broken, wounded, misplaced, that the church can be a place of sanctuary. The church can be a place of healing. The church can be a place of love. Thank you for that today, God. Thank you for that today, Lord. And I decree a thing in this house. That in our brokenness, that you'll give us beauty for ashes. That you will be the balm in Gilead. To heal, to deliver, and to set free, and to transform God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for that today. And we say amen. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus the Christ as your Lord. We are grateful that you have connected with us on our live stream. As you have received the word of God, perhaps you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Rededicate your life back to him and or become a member of Abundant Life Worship Center. The Bible is clear in Romans 10 verse 9 on how you can receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For rededication, when you renew your vow to the Lord or rededicate, you are making a heartfelt decision communicated to God through prayer. 1 John 1 verse 8 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 4 verse 8 says, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. We would love the opportunity to connect with you as you rededicate your life back to Jesus Christ. For church membership, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1 says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it had pleased him. Jeremiah 3 verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You have heard that no man is an island. This certainly is true in the body of Christ. God has a pastor for each of his children. No one is exempt. Even pastors have pastors. On today, if you decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life back to Jesus, and or become a member of Abundant Life Worship Center, please contact us at 706-592-9221. We invite you to meet us at 2070 Brown Road, Hepzibah, Georgia, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m., for in-person worship. You can also watch us via live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, www.alwc.net. We invite you to connect with us through our various social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We are grateful for the vision that God has given us and the partners who make it possible. If you would like to sow into our vision, please see the information on the screen. Thank you for worshiping with us. From the depths of our hearts, we appreciate you sharing your time with us. May you and your family walk in whole life prosperity.